Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy. Let's go on and talk about the pubis bone and its attachments. So the pubis bone is basically going to be located, let's find the acetabulum first. The one-fifth of the acetabulum is formed by the pubis bone and it lies antero-inferiorly to the acetabulum and it's a thin bone in contrast to the ischium which is quite thick. So this is the pubic bone. Pubic bone is divided into three parts, the body of pubis and when you minus the body out, you can see there are two handle-like bony parts that are emerging from the body. One is going above, hence it is known as the superior ramus. The one going below is called the inferior ramus. And you can see this is the obturator foramen, foramen meaning hole. This obturator foramen's anterior boundary is the pubis. So now let's talk about the first part of the pubis which is the body. This is the body of the pubis. The most important feature of the body of the pubis is that superiorly the body presents a pubic crest which runs from the medial side all the way till the lateral side and finally the pubic tubercle. The lateral end of the pubic crest is the pubic tubercle. Tubercle meaning any prominence or a protruding area. So this is the pubic tubercle as you can see coming from the pubic crest which is lying on the superior part of body of pubis. Apart from this, the body of the pubis has an anterior surface, a pelvic surface and a medial surface. Of these most important is the medial surface as it is going to bind with the medial surface of pubic bone of the other hip bone or the right hip bone to form the symphysis pubis which is the joint between the two pubic bones. Now let's talk about the superior ramus of the pubic bone. The superior ramus basically consists of a superior border which is quite prominent as you can see it's very sharp. This superior border of this superior ramus of the pubic bone is also known as the pectineal line. If you all remember the medial border was extending all the way here and I told you earlier that this is the pectineal line. We have the anterior border which is also known as the obturator crest. And finally, the inferior border, which is making the obturator foramen's superior part. So these were the main borders of the superior ramus of pubic bone, the superior, the anterior, and the inferior. Now, between the superior and anterior border, this surface is known as the pectineal surface. Between the anterior and inferior border this is the obturator groove over here the obturator nerves and vessels pass and finally this is the pelvic surface between the superior and inferior borders now let's talk about the inferior ramus of the pubic bone the upper part of the inferior ramus is basically going to be the inferior border of the obturator foramen and also of note is that this is the ischium bones inferior ramus this is the pubic bones inferior ramus they both are meeting over here forming the conjoint ischiopubic rami. So this is the ischiopubic rami consisting of both the inferior rami of the ischium and the pubis bones. So this is the ischiopubic rami. So these were the bony features of the pubis bone. Now for the sake of ease of understanding the attachments, I have divided the pubic bones attachment into three. The most important is the pubic tubercle. This bears the attachment of the medial end of the inguinal ligament. Now this is super important because there is an inguinal ligament, a very important ligament of the lower limb, which runs from, we have already studied, it comes from the anterior superior iliac spine and it attaches to the pubic tubercle medially. So this is how the inguinal ligament is kept in your body. So the pubic tubercle bears attachment of the inguinal ligament and just lateral to the pubic crest, close to the pubic pubercle are two muscles, the rectus abdominis and the pyramidalis. So the inguinal ligament, rectus abdominis and pyramidalis, RIP. Let's talk about the pectineal line. Mnemonic for this is clip. How? Well, it's because the pectineal line is severely important because it's of origin to very important structures that are the conjoint tendon, the lacunar ligament, and finally the pectineus muscle, the fascia covering the pectineus and the pectineal ligament. And then we have the mnemonic for the entire pubic bone is the OGALA. Now what does this stand for? Well, let's get O out of the way because internal surface of your pelvic bone will give in the margins the obturator internus muscle 
and outer surface of the obturator foramen on its margins the obturator externus. So, O is the obturator internus that is arising from the pubic bone and this is the obturator externus that is arising from the pubic bone. Then we have the G, the G stands for on the outer surface we have the gracilis, then the A stands for the adductor longus, another A for the adductor brevis and finally the L is for the levator ani muscle. So, the OGLA stands for O, obturator externus and internus, G for gracilis, adductor longus, adductor brevis and the levator ani in the inner surface. So, that is all for the attachments of the pubic bone. In the next video, we will touch the ischium bone. Till then, thank you so much for watching.